Welcome to our channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab and along with my husband Chris, we do thrift flips. We take unwanted, unloved, outdated thrift store finds and then we give them new life. And on our channel, we share the process with you all. So when we get out our Graco sprayer, we are going to be mass producing items. That, so that means we will be doing a whole bunch of items that we can spray. So in making multiple videos, and I have to say when Chris started gathering all these items up since our last video where we had done bread boxes, I had no idea how many bread boxes I collected to a flip but i have to tell you that they do sell so i can't pass them up when i find them no matter what their condition is so yep for 409 i did not worry about this one missing its class we know that we can fill in this with something Then a friend asked, actually brought this one from her sister's estate all the way back from California because she knew that I loved flipping bread boxes. What a kind soul. And then I know I'm sure there are those of you who th say leave this rooster bread box as is. This is actually a home goods item that was on a clearance, clearance, and clearance if I showed you the stickers on the back. And when you think of a vintage bread box, this is definitely what you think of. The word bread, that little wheat, the roll top, it's just perfect. So now we go to this side of the bread box line. I told you I had thrifted quite a few bread boxes, nine in total. I may have a problem, but since they sell, it is well worth the time to mass produce. So when one sells, you can put another one in. So this one is a, it rolls nice. That is definitely one thing I look for is how it rolls. This one is a little bit on the needy side, very filthy, dirty. Um, uh, we'll figure that one out. It needs something to help keep it up. I thought this was a nice find, but then when I realized that wasn't really metal, it was sprayed to look like metal. It must be a ceramic tile of some sort underneath that and probably a different latching system so you don't have to unlatch it like that all the time there again this is just your basic roll top little accordion that goes up and down so just updating it and giving it some words will just bring it into the farmhouse this one is a pine nice and plain oop hey left a receipt in there always good to keep those receipts so this is unfinished so this one has a whole world ahead of it so here's the fun part. As you see, I have all these different tools, some to remove the stickers, any tags that may be on these. I know, you know, I always say it over and over again, remove your stickers. And I'm not gonna say this is the easiest thing to do is to take these bread boxes apart to clean them, to properly fix them, and to properly spray paint them. I'm not saying that this is the funnest, but to get the cleanest paint job, to get these fixed properly and painted properly that so that they're reworking, yep, I, I, quite a few of these bread boxes I'm going to be taking apart. I, We find that if we spray paint especially that accordion the roll top part of this separately that it stays working and we're we're still having that free flowing when we get it back together that it's still working so i just start looking for any screws that's why i have so many screwdrivers on hand some are flat some are phillips some are the square head you never know when you get into these vintage bread boxes, what type of tools you're going to need. Sometimes the knobs are little bitty ones. Sometimes they're great big ones. A lot of these bread boxes always seem to have a water damage on the bottom of it. So I'm going to need to sand them separately is another reason for taking them apart. I know that there's a lot of flippers out there that probably will steer clear of these, but you can take them apart and you can put them back together. So don't be intimidated just in your mind or whatever, what it, which way you need to organize them to make sure you can get them put back together. And no, this was already cracked when Chris, when it was together. So actually us taking it apart is being, making it be able that we can fix it properly. Getting some tight bond wood glue in there, getting it clamped together. 
No, it was probably fine when it was put together and then it didn't come apart, but it does make us feel better to get that crack fixed. So as I went in to start sanding this rooster off, I know there's going to be those of you that love this, but it's, it's a thrifted item and I'm repainting it. So as I go in to sand on it, I realize that it is not painted on, that it is one of those pieces of paper. So I have found that I could sand the dickens out of this and try to find it down to the wood, but it's actually be best to tap this piece out and put a new piece in because I find out if I don't get every little piece of paper removed that it ends up, when I put a stencil on it, it ends up pulling up through that paper. So yep, oh, I'm just going to be tapping this out instead of spending the time trying to get all that paper removed. And then Chris is just going to cut a piece of MDF board to replace that with. And then the MDF board is that really smooth texture, so just rush, roughing it up a little bit with some sanding. And then he's just going to be using a little bit of the tight bond glue and gluing it in place, just setting some weights while some gallon paint cans on top of it to weight it down and letting glue do what glue does and glue two things together. Now I'll go back in and assess every single one of the pieces and parts of all these bread boxes, seeing where it needs sand down, any unevenness, anything that needs to be fixed. It's just what you have to do when you're flipping these kind of items and sanding these down, getting that surface, any of that finish that was on there. Sometimes over time, it just wears off or the cleaning products are just being wet. It just needs to be sanded smooth. And then of course, there's always pieces and parts that need to be filled. What looks good as a wood, the knots, the nail holes, when it's a uh, unfinished or just a stain it does not look good when it's painted so we need to go back in and find any holes that need to be filled in and just using the Durham water putty. So for one of the bread boxes if it had those little knobbies those cute little accents this one was only missing one so Chris did fix that one there was a couple other ones that were missing almost all of them so we just pulled and filled in those holes but one's a okay fix. But I'm sure you're all looking like, oh my gosh, that is a disaster pile. Are you going to remember how to put those back together? Well, with a prayer, we hope so. So now that we did all that prep work, now it's time for the cleaning prep work. So I'm just going in with a hot bucket of water and some super clean. And then wiping every piece and part that I can get to trying to get any grime grease any questionable there's some questionable stuff on there off of these items and then letting them thoroughly dry before moving on so yep i got them all cleaned they're all dried and now i put them on our spray paint board so we can carry them into our spray paint room to get them sprayed yep still trying to keep the ones that we took apart organized but they'll be like puzzle pieces. If we get them mixed up, we know that they won't fit together because it won't be its mate. So we are still in love with our Graco sprayer. Best $300 as a flipper we have spent. So it has not given us any problems. We've been able to mass produce a ton of items. Yeah, there might be a little bit of having to clean out the head during the process, but so far this has been wonderful. So we have the items flipped upside down. This definitely cuts this many bread boxes, nine bread boxes, just cuts that paint time down by into nothing. And it is well worth our time to take these type of bread boxes apart, the ones that have this roll top and spray them that way that they are not getting sprayed together. I have to say that you have to go very lightly when you're trying to spray it because the pressure does tend to push them over and then having to carry them in and out of the spray room sometimes they get knocked over so we've kind of learned to set them off to the side but that way we can get that underneath of that roll top also. 
So this is where that tag team, that team effort comes in handy. He comes in with one, he sprays one. I come in one, he and I spray one. And half the time we remember to turn the camera on to film, but definitely is a great way to get these done. So after they're all dry, now we can flip them over and try to get the other side that we can all painted up. But I have to say this sprayer is definitely saving us a lot of time. Now that the black is covered and dried, it's time to move on to the Kills paint and primer. And with the same as like the black, we use it right out of the gallon can. He adds a couple Dixie cups full of water into it, stirs it in. That makes it thin enough to come through the sprayer. And we have noticed that the black doesn't really plug up the sprayer head that often, but every couple items we spray with the kills pain primer probably because it has the primer in it we do have to clean off the head but there's no problems it pushes it right through after you wipe it off and purge it but look at that how it just the time saved is well worth the time of cleaning that head off and it purges right out so we've had the same system way longer than we've had any other kind of spray system So we got our most coverage on using the sprayer, but with the turns and angles that you have to get in the inside, there's some hand painting to be done. And of course, as the paint is drying, you can see the little splatters of whatever was left behind in the stain or just some deep grease that you just couldn't get out that had soaked into this natural wood. So shellac it is a couple coats of shellac and just those little areas that are having some problems is no big deal we needed to go in and hand paint some of them anyway just to get those right angles 
this was actually the only piece that I was going to salvage. I just absolutely love the vintage look of this. The other part of that bread box had so much water damage on it. So I gave a very good cleaning to this piece. Now I'm just going in with some Waverly antiquing wax. It seems to be matching up with this color quite well. And then after that dries, I will do a little bit of the polycrylic in the spray to seal this in because it is usually a kitchen piece. It's a bread box. So yeah, see how that's just matching it up and where the wear and tear of the original stain. If I went in with another stain, it might really darken it up. I don't want to take the, the time. I really do love this vintage bread with that wheat. So for this hardware, we got it all clean, just using some Dawn dish soap and hot water, let it dry, and now we're working on getting it spray painted black using the Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer in one. And though that hardware is nicely painted with the Rust-Oleum, it still needs a top coat, so we're going to the Polycrylic and the Clear Matte just to protect that finish. So now that these bread boxes are all painted up, they've dried, they sat over night, it's time to get them sanded. And Chris is just going in with a 300 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander and just making sure that he's getting it nice and smooth before putting all these back together. Yep, you could put them together and then sand it, but why not? It's a flat sur surface, so why not get them sanded before putting them back together? So we like to distress our pieces. So what he's doing, that's why we painted the underneath coat of black. And plus the black helps cover up any color that was previous on these bread boxes. So he's going in with some 220 sandpaper and pushing down a little bit on the hard side to get that black to show through. And the harder you push down, if you want that natural wood color to come through, you can do that also. But just hitting all those sharp, sharp corners, those edges, just to bring out the hidden detail. And now that it has it all sanded, time to assemble it back up. So she's just using a little bit of the tight bond wood glue and making sure that this bread box is nice and secure. As you saw, we were easily able to tap it out, but that's okay. It was nice that we were able to tap it out to get it apart so we could paint each one of these pieces separately. So after adding a little bit more of that tight bond glue to the sides, he's just finishing this piece off by adding some brad nails to the thicker areas of the bread box to make sure that it's gonna be nice and secure. And as he's working along, if any of that tight bond glue squirts out, seeps out, go ahead and try to wipe that off because that stuff is rock hard <laughs> when it dries. Now he's just replacing the roller system and making sure that it's going to be gliding properly. When we when we were spray painting them, we definitely wanted just to get a nice coat in there to cover that natural wood, but not so much that it was going to prevent the roller system from gliding easily. So on this bread box, he had to replace the back. We were out of MDF board, so he had a little piece of a bead board. You use what you have when you're doing a project. So this will have some fancy beadboard on the back of the bread box and in the inside, but that's okay. I'll just make it look a little bit more fancy. So he's going in and distressing in between all of that also. Now I have to say that I found the front of this, how this opens and closes a little unique. I'd never run across a bread box like this before. So he's just smoothing down any of those brush strokes, getting it nice and smooth, and then he'll go back in where the the creases are and get it distressed just a little bit. Now this one was screwed together, so that's what he's doing. He's just replacing those screws. Yep, it probably was a little bit of a challenge for us after they got it all painted white to know which pieces and parts went to the ones that we completely put together, but that's the good thing about video. You're like, oh, let's go back to the video and see which pieces and parts. I have to be honest with you. Especially when, since we were doing multiple ones, we did kind of take a moment, step back, figure out how it all went together, looked at previous videos, and then was able to achieve getting them back together. So I don't know how you all feel about taking bread boxes apart to paint each piece separately, get them working properly, get them cleaned. We feel that it's well worth the time to have, to get it cleaned, get it working properly, fix anything that is wrong with it just to sell a nice product. So for that beadboard piece, he's gonna have to attach that using the staple gun, but it's just one of those things. We're gonna make sure that this bread box is nice and put together. Mm -hmm. 
but this sure is a cute bread box and we will be going back through and filling those screw holes in with some putty and repainting those little areas. Well, not all of them were taken apart, so some of them he just has to go in and go in with the orbital sander, get the, all those brush strokes, make those that piece nice and smooth, and then go back in and hand detail, hand sand anywhere that he wants some of those details to show up. I understand that this is probably not everybody's traditional way of making over a thrifted bread box. But a lot of these bread boxes, there's a reason that they were donated. They were not working properly. They had water damage. They had seen much better days. So most of the fixes for some of these were that they needed just plain and simply to be taken apart. And especially for that roll, roll top part of it, to get that working properly, spraying it is easier and taking it apart is the easiest for us anyway. So this one was kind of unique that it had that metal on the top that was badly painted. So I tried sanding down the metal. It just metal, as you know, does not sand very well. So Chris is just taking the ta tape off the top of it and seeing what it looks like now that it's all painted white. So if you've been watching a lot of our videos lately, you, you seem to think that in at least one video, I keep calling them a problem child. One item that just is not working properly, not turning out as easy of a paint job as we'd like it to be. And this accordion, this roll top, and I know there's a fancy name for it, but I struggle with words sometimes, is that... So I recently had a viewer share some of the things that she was doing with the Durham water putty and I was excited to give one of them a try. So I cut out this stencil. Yep, I cut a stencil out using my silhouette using cardstock. So with so many bread boxes to, to do and having to come up with each an individual idea, I thought this was a perfect time to try this out. Yep, I'm mixing up Durham water putty and using it as a spackle to leave a design behind. So I measured off where center was, centered these little mosaic tiles. I didn't want to do a little bit of overkill because I wasn't really sure how this was going to work out. So you're seeing it new here with me, me first. This is my first attempt after doing this. So I mixed up some of the Durham water putty. And I'm at first I just start using a tongue depressor to put it in, pushing down that stencil with my hand to make sure that I'm not getting it underneath. But I quickly did flip over to the spatula to spread it out. So after getting it applied, I did go back through and try to scrape off any excess product I could, still working very gingerly, very carefully. Now I need to take the stencil off because you don't want your cardstock drying to your bread box. So I'm just removing that tape and lifting that off. And to my surprise, look at that. I have a design pattern on this little bread box. I'm so excited. And then I use any of my leftover Durham water putty that I mixed up to fill in any of those holes. I know it would have been nice not to have to sand them after they were already painted, but it was just one of those items that that's not what you had to deal with. Let this dry completely overnight. I do see a little bit of raised bumps. I might have taken a little bit more time to work on those, but I think I can hand sand them along with sanding down all where I filled in the nail and the screw holes. Just going in by hand. I didn't mix up a very heavy batch, meaning that it shouldn't be too bad just to go in and hand sand. So I need to seal in that Durham water putty. I'm just going to be using the polycrylic on the design that I made and also where I covered in any of those screw and nail holes that just evens out the prosody for what was painted and what was this raw dry putty. So I'm just going in with that Kills paint and primer, just the white and getting these a couple coats. Of course, yes, I would have loved to paint it in black and distress it, but I wasn't really sure on the sanding quality. If I went back in and tried to sand to show some of that black, would I be sanding some of the Durham water putty off 
it is a raised stencil, but not terribly raised that I can give any more sanding to it. I don't, I want it still to be raised. I don't want to make it flat. So when I thrifted this bread box, it was missing its glass, it was missing its knob, but for 409, okay, thank you, I will take you home. I knew we could come up with something to cover that hole in the bread box up, and Chris was happy. He's like, I could cut a piece of glass for that, no problem. I have little screws that hold glass into place, so perfect. So this is what Chris is doing now. He is just cutting off measuring what he needs and then he's going to be showing you how to use the glass cutting tool the little red handled tool in his hand is the glass cutting tool so he's got that straight edge of the metal ruler and he's going to be scoring down on that glass where he marked off with a sharpie See, he went up and down it a couple times, put gloves on, and then used it to tap along the side of the workspace to get it to be that way of where it would break. And now he's just using a sanding block, something that sharpens your knives, to make sure that the glass is going to be sharp. It's going to just need a little bit of a bevel so it's not so sharp that it cuts somebody. And I know he only showed you the one one angle, the one side that he had scored it on and snapped it. And then he turned that piece over and scored it again and snapped that side. So here now he's using the, the little glass screws. They have those little rubber arms, fingers on them to hold the glass in. We buy these like by the hundreds in Amazon because a lot of the thrifted pieces that we find are always missing these when they have glass or even backs of pictures. These are a little bit more they're bigger so they should be holding it in real nice unfortunately it would have been nice to leave this as a metal but metal doesn't sand very well it shows all the marks of the sandpaper so oh, what do you do so i'm just going in with the rust-oleum paint and primer and we accidentally picked up some of this satin and the knob that i've picked out for it is kind of shiny so here we go god wink moment let me use this satin finish up yes i wrapped this bread box in grocery sacks taped it off because spray paint finds its lowest part just like water and find any gap that it can to get through any crack that you have through there so make sure if you have to go back in after you've taped or painted something <laughs> to thoroughly tape it off and protect it because that spray paint will find its little area to get into Well, it would be nice if all these bread boxes at the same time are ready to get the same thing done, but that's just not realistic. There's nine bread boxes and every bread box had a different need. So some of these are done. They are ready. They are ready to have their finishing coat of the Verithane finishing wax. So that's what I'm going in and doing any of the bases that I can do to let that cure. I'm going to go in and do ahead of time. That way Chris can get... <laughs> get ahead and start assembling some of these. All those pieces and parts that we sprayed are now ready to get put back together. Now, when I was very thin finishing waxing on it, like this one, I could do the door, just not the glass. So where I'm gonna be adding some detail, I just left the door out. Basically, I just did the body of the bread box with the very thin finishing wax. And then any of the door details I left because I am going to be putting some wording on them. So for this box, it had a dowel knob. That means it had a little piece of wood that stuck into the door part of it. So Chris is just using a little bit of tight bond glue. As you see, I could just pull it out. So it wasn't attached very well anymore anyway. So he's just adding a little bit of glue on it to get it back into that little hole. And some of these bread boxes, we had to choose new knobs for that is the nice thing about being a thrifter i have a hard time passing up any knobs but remembering which hinges went to where you kind of figure it out because the all the hinges won't fit on each other so it's very self-explanatory when you're doing it yep if you wonder how we keep all these pieces and parts you can't put a different hinge on something else the door won't work right We 
wasn't really sure if you could see this ray stencil. It was there, but I wanted it to pop just a little bit more. Like I said, I could not paint it black. I didn't want to try to sand it anymore because I didn't want to take that off. So I had just ordered this black wax. It actually had just came the day before from Amazon to test up on some of my black metal items. And so I'm just going in with a wet wipe and a little bit of that black wax on there just to see if it'll just grab a little bit of that. I don't want it to look dirty, but I want it to pop it just a little bit so you can see it a little bit more. I said we'd come back to our problem child. On this roll top, the fabric was just worn. It just was not holding it tight anymore, causing it not to roll very well. So unfortunately, after painting it with the sprayer, we had to rip that fabric off, which made a mess out of the whole piece. So I had to sand each one of these slats, repaint each one of these slats. And now what Chris is doing here is he's got them all clamped together we went on to youtube ourselves we researched how do we get this to be a roll top and to be nice and tight because we had attempted at first at just to free staple some fabric on but it was still loose so yep we took a moment and we went to youtube say okay people who have made these by hand how do we fix this so basically this is what it was is they just took some tight bond glue and they spread it on the back kind of like a spray adhesive most of them did use the tight bond glue that we saw woodworkers and then they just put a piece of canvas well canvas i use drop cloth for reupholstering so i always have pieces of that so that's what chris is going to cut and attach to the back of this roll top for this to fix the spread box so now that he's got the roll top fixed, he's going to reattach the rolling part back into the sides of the bread box. I know some people probably would have just thrown it out. And I'm, let me tell you, Chris was on the fence like, is it worth it? But I'm like, we can fix it. I know we can. I don't know what it is about saving items, but I just can't do it. Very few items do we. And I have actually thrown one roll top away in the lifetime of flipping but we didn't know that we could take them apart the way that we do now so i'm i'm just sharing that with you yes we have gotten frustrated on a roll top and had thrown it away but now we know that we can take them apart it is it it is the love of flipping items and figuring out and problem solving but look at how it free flows in there now so now we have to carry all the bread boxes into our house. <laughs> Having your stencil cut machine in a workshop that can get really dusty is not a great idea, but all these bread boxes, I wanted to be able to put some type of wording on. And I know it would be very easy just to go in and make the same word for each one of the bread box, but that's just not me. I just like to do a little bit of something different every time I make a bread box, even though maybe bread box passed and they may look similar. But that's the nice thing. If I'm going to pay for a monthly subscription to the design stores on my Cameo Silhouette, I'm going to use them. So I go in, I look to see if there's any new bakery, pastry, bread fonts, any new words that I can kind of tweak a little bit to make my own. So I'm going in on a large mat. I don't need to have my small mat and I should be able to fit all the ones on this mat. I go in and size what size I need each of these to be. And then I go in and pick, like, I can just take this bread. I don't really like the swirlies on it. That's a little too fancy. I just want the bread. So I just go in and ungroup it and get rid of the swirlies. If the swirlies are your thing, then you can leave them on there. But it just makes it easier that I already have that all put together. Like this bakery... I don't want the whole bakery. I'm just going in and taking the pieces and parts, deleting what I don't want. I want it to say pastry, so I'm going to go in and delete that bakery, delete the pastry at the ends because the pastry that I'm making on the top of it, this is for the biggest square bread box that I'm making, and delete that and then go in and pick a font that's pleasing with the other lettering and make pastries on that. I know this is a lot. Not everybody has a stencil cutting machine but since we are flippers i do a lot of little details like this and i think it's well worth my time so i do share i know some people want to know some ideas for their cameos and their crickets i tend to use my 
silhouette more than my Cricut. I am so sorry. I have one, but it's just, I guess it's the ease of, I already know how to use my silhouette so well, and I'm still struggling with my Cricut. So I'm going to share in detail here how I'm doing the roll top. I had a lot of people ask about how do you get your stenciling on there. I just have it closed. I put, I, I kind of size it to what I feel is pleasing to my eye. You can make your lettering as big as you want, whatever is pleasing to your eye. I just gingerly lay that on my, I use the Oracle permanent vinyl for my stencils. And so now I'm just trying to make sure that I'm cent centered. For me, the wording going over the roll top, the curved part, I'm afraid that it'll get too spacey. So I try to pick out the flattest part that I can. So that's why mine is sized the way that it's sized. So I'm just making sure that I am centered. To remove my transfer tape, I use the Duck Band Clear Contact Paper. I make sure that I've gotten that vinyl down there. I smashed it, smoothed it, got it into the little creases. You can kind of see how I creased it. I just want a little bit of paint. I'm just going in with a multi-use apple barrel black using that makeup sponge, doing the dry technique. I'm not trying to squish it into those holes, into the slat parts, because if you try to do that, all you're going to do is get it to bleed underneath and you're going to have a mess. Just, you're going to see those white parts. Do not worry about it because this is not the angle that you're normally going to be looking at your bread box. So just have trust that you don't try to fill in those little white slat parts. Just go in with a few coats. I dry in between. I usually do about three coats on my black. Not only do I use the dry blow dryer to dry the paint in between coats, I also use it to help heat up that vinyl to release that sticky so that I'm not pulling off all that paint that we spent so many hours painting. So that helps it just release that sticky and just heats it up enough that I can go in with a little boutonniere pin. Remember you're not when you're going in to get your little pieces and parts you're not digging a hole you just want to grab that vinyl. I me too have accidentally scraped my paint trying to go in it at a like I'm digging a hole. Nope you just want to go in like you're just picking up that piece of vinyl. So just a little recap of doing the roll top. I just do the flat part of it. I don't go around the curve. See how I'm going in with my scraper tool, kind of going in between the slats, making sure that this is good and adhered before removing my transfer tape. When you're removing that transfer tape, especially with all those little pieces and parts of the lettering, you have those whole areas where the slats were, so it's not necessarily going to be grabbing fully. So as you see, I'm just gingerly going very slowly, removing that transfer tape, having my finger ready to grab any piece that's getting grabbed up with the with the transfer tape. I just always like to share that because I think we all have the same struggles Sometimes it just looks like you're ripping the transfer tape off and all those pieces and parts are staying right there. No, they're not. <laughs> I was kind of wondering I didn't I I don't mind pre-painting the white but then I got to go out and get the paint using it as a base color from the shop I'm not going to keep a gallon of the kills paint and it's just not efficient for me to pre-paint white then paint over black so I had done this where I he heated up that vinyl on a piece of fabric that I just did a cushion for and I thought I wonder if I can heat up the vinyl to make sure that it's good and stuck to a piece of wood so it did actually work out real well for me to do that so for this bread I had reversed it I had mirrored it because I'm going to be putting it on the inside of that glass piece that Chris had cut so I didn't share with you when I was cutting it out on the silhouette that I had to hit the reverse of it. So I thought, oh, I better point this out and show you, show you, yep, I do spend the time weeding this whole thing. 
rubbing it on my transfer tape, making sure that I get all those pieces and parts. And I I use that contact paper, so it is. I dust something off with it. Those newer pieces just stick way too well to everything. So here I am. I'm putting it on the inside of this. I thought this would be the easiest way to clean. I think the vintage ones actually have two pieces of glass where that vinyl is in between it, but that would just make it so thick and heavy and Chris would have to try to cut two matching pieces of glass. So I think this will work out just well doing it from the inside. That way the outer probably gets a little bit more dirty than the inner. So when I am centering a stencil, I find it's easiest for me to cut my vinyl down as close to my stencil as I can. So a lot of times that means some of the areas I might need to put some masking tape over the sides. This just helps me when I'm centering it onto my piece. I know you could leave that excess vinyl, but sometimes I have a hard time centering it. So that's why I'm using the masking tape. Then depending on what look you're going for, you can sand it to make it look a little bit more aged on your vinyl on your lettering but i just want to keep that crisp black so i'm just going in with some polycrylic making sure that it's good and adhered on there if i went just in to wax it sometimes you might take the chance of smearing it and after that light misting of polycrylic a little bit of varathane finishing wax after a light sanding to finish these off So I thank you so much for watching today's video and what was your favorite and did we inspire you in any way to look at thrift store finds in a new way. I thank you so much for watching today's video and if you are part of our YouTube family thank you so much and if you're new to our channel and checking out the content for the first time please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell. Thanks again for watching.